Hello. Welcome to Whispers in the Theater. I'm your host, the Whispering Gardener Shoe, here to continue our exciting tale. The Other Side of Myth, Chapter 4, Another Encounter. The next day, Kiara discovered that finding a mysterious woman was a difficult thing to do. The car she drove said she lived in the rich part of town, but between large houses and high-rises, it was like hunting a ghost. If it were a movie or a TV show, Kiara would have found everything she needed to know. Her date with Tristan would trigger an epiphany, and she'd leave with a crucial clue. These things, however, proved to be deceptive. Even the car hadn't been the hint Kiara thought it was, only telling her the make and model was fairly popular. The worst part about her search was being in a part of town she didn't know. Shops had extravagant things on display, with price tags to leave the mind blown. It made her weary of even the cheapest thing like the food she so craved now. She told her parents she was going to the observatory, so they hadn't given her extra money. There was a time she had to return, too, and it was encroaching fast. She had to save money to get home, but her stomach disagreed. As it let out a protest, she sat on a nearby bench. Despite how much it slowed her down, She thought over what she actually knew. In the shade of the tree beside her, she realized the woman was just as enigmatic as the stranger from two days ago. For the first time since she started her search, she wondered if the two were connected. Just like with the speckled beast, she had to get better at that. Every part of her said they should be, but a whisper in the back of her mind told her they weren't. The woman simply fit in too well with the world that Kiara knew. She had a stylish air about her, from the way she talked to the way she strutted back to her car. She probably spent her youth on every fashion site. She probably scoured the net for things she couldn't buy in Iravel, and rather than buying online, Lose there herself. Kiara could not decide if the woman made all her money herself or simply inherited it. But she knew without a doubt that the man wasn't the same. His clothes screamed that he was trying to fit in. Maybe he wasn't familiar with the city, but he'd have to be foreign to the country to wear leather this time of year. His sunglasses certainly fit the mode but the whisper said otherwise. He was wearing those glasses to hide his eyes. It made sense. By his own words, his eyes could tell a story. It would tell you who he was, or maybe even where he came from. For whatever reason, he didn't want the world to know. How convenient that glasses didn't stick out. She let that thought simmer. What could their eyes say? Kiara closed hers. She imagined both of them, trying to decide what their eyes looked like. For the woman, she saw the speckled beast. They were cat-like, predatory. The woman walked around like she was a starlet, but she was more a feline prowling about. Feline, that fit her well. The man, though? When Kiara thought about him, nothing came to mind. It wasn't that she couldn't guess. Blues, browns, greens, and even scarlet like her own. She could picture them all, and not one seemed right. It made more sense for his sockets to be empty. 
It felt unnervingly right that he watched with hollow voids. A chill ran up her back, and she almost jumped as her mobile chimed. It was time to go. The chill became a blizzard as she searched for a shuttle line. Down the way from her, the man had appeared. No one seemed to notice him. He weaved through the throng of people, moving her way, an eerie phantom fading carelessly into the world. She rushed to the line as the shadow approached. No hesitation, no doubt. She climbed aboard and sighed in relief as it pulled away. The man didn't even watch it go. Maybe he wasn't looking for her. She truly didn't know. She didn't even know why she was avoiding him, beyond the fact he was a stranger. There was just a part of her that wanted to escape. It could be irrational, but no other part spoke up. She sighed again, getting comfortable. She could find the answer during the ride. Perhaps because of the solitude, a man beside her said. Kiara nearly jumped out of her skin. She could look down the road, but knew she wouldn't see him, even if the shadow hadn't moved too far away. The seat beside her was empty, after all. But now, the stranger was there. I am an anomaly, but not like the woman or her beast. The power within you recognizes this, and knows that we are similar. It has never met another like it, though. Unfamiliarity fees foreboding. He looked at her. Kiara fumbled her pendant from under her shirt. Holding it tight, she glared back. Who are you? She demanded. He nodded, almost as if to approve the question. Where I come from, I am known as Dotes. Where I have gone, I was known as a stranger. He said, the way Dotis sounded in her mind made Kiara shake her head. What do you want? She asked, and the nod came again. To assist you, to warn you, and I believe to offer something to you. He looked forward this time. What could you possibly offer me? I'm warning you, if I don't come home by 2530, every police station in 20 miles will know my location. She barked. It was 2350 now. She knew an hour and 30 minutes was enough time to get hurt. But she'd fight him every second till then. I can offer you information. I have learned much in all the places I have gone. Daughter seemed to ignore the threat. I know firstly that you seek a woman, he said, and Kiara's eyes widened. She hated herself for giving it away, but the information was important. Who is she? Where is she? I do not know who, nor do I know the where. She frowned. Then what do you know? I know that she is one of the first. She is one of those who have found new names in the beast you have encountered. They fear you, and so it was only a matter of time before they encountered you. Kiara's heart sunk. If that was true, it was always going to happen. She brought her friends into this mess. Is it because I can make them vulnerable? You do not simply make them vulnerable. You pull at them making them more a part of this world than they want to be. What do you mean by this world? Do you know the myth of two worlds? How couldn't she? How couldn't anyone? The myth of two worlds was a legend so old, people told it around the campfire. There were plenty of books based on it, plenty of movies, plenty of games. It spoke of two worlds in parallel with each other. This world, 
Nondoxia, built with rapid advancements in technology, and another, Magdalia, where magic forged the future instead. Though they live separately, they are bound in secret places. Go to one when the day and time are right, and you could find yourself in a new world. In the last movie based on the myth, a boy lost his family in a crash and stumbled into a nearby thicket. When he made it through the other side, he was in a magical well, where an elven girl helped him recover. They fell for one another, but this didn't go over well with an elven council. Kiara shook the thought out of her head as she answered his question. As if he was waiting, Dortes nodded. What if the two wells are connected, as the legends say, by bridge, or curtain, or burbling stream? If there's a threshold to cross, then what of the things that lie between? Forevermore dwelling in this place between places, what becomes of them when they are jealous of both? What if there are people who can set them free? But you just had to make them more a part of this world than they want to be. If they're really envious, shouldn't they be happy? Would you want to truly enter a place of your dreams if everyone there would hate you? You who feeds upon them just to remain in their world? Would you truly seek it if brutal wounds could leave you trapped again? A minor breach is safe, lest you be banished home. A hole in the bottom of a canyon. So far beyond eye they might as well not exist. Light breaking the shadows after night stretches too long. A beacon burning over you. Always promising escape. Maybe you could climb it sometime. Maybe with enough effort you could get free. And then, careless and oblivious, a person casts you back. It could be a bump or a breath, and you'd still plummet below. Kiara imagined it, shuddering at the thought. She had no sympathy for the speckled beast, but she understood why it escaped. So one of these dwellers attacked me, and that woman was his partner. Yes, she was, but she was also it. They are one and the same. Her fury is its fury. It is the fury of someone robbed of their one true desire. So she'll definitely come after my friends. Yes, and then your family. And you. I'm not just going to let her do that. If you don't know who she is or where she is, what am I supposed to do to stop her? Kiara's chest tightened as the words flowed out. Did she draw attention? Did she even care if she did? You know that she will come. You simply need to be ready. As Dolter said this, Kiara imagined him closing his eyes. Just know that the key to stopping her is that you do not hesitate. As he said this, he seemed both young and old at once. As the shuttle sign flashed her stop, she turned back to him. I won't hesitate. She clutched her pendant. Daughters simply smiled. When the shuttle stopped, she didn't ask him to move. Before it even slowed down, he was already gone. Chapter 4 Ends And so too ends another episode of Whispers in the theater. I would be delighted if you were to join me once again.